<sighs> I just got some bad news. <coughs> I have something bad to you that I will not be eating chicken run and was a grubber to the curse of the wear rabbit next month. Specifically because I found a Hot Wheels car based on the Batman Forever Batmobile. I'm not excited to pick up this car, which was used for that 95 film that I hate called Batman Forever. As I know, this is the main reason why I hate this movie. Well, specifically because of this guy named Jack Buchanan. He says he wants to make this review in what he likes this movie. All I can say is I really hate Batman Forever. As I know, I want to disrespect his opinion because he just gave this movie a 10 out of 10. But I know. But this is not what I want to see. Oh, how good this. Why did they flanderize Jim Carrey? As I know, this movie is the main reason why I think this franchise entered seasonal rot. I'll have to dive it down dwellersly to do this so. Now, I'll give you the main reason why Sam Raimi never directed Batman Forever. Specifically, Raimi wasn't considered the right fit for the direction of the series, since he was relatively known to make his own body of work of wanting to made of wanting to make up some sort of violently dark films that would spook us all. I know Batman Forever is one of Sam Raimi's unmade comic book movies. I guess he, he was offered to... I guess both Sam Raimi and Tim Burton were both offered to, to direct Batman Forever together. Sadly, after Joe Schumacher was chosen, Raimi stepped down because he was never able to direct that Batman film for himself. I guess, uh, is what I'm guessing is that in the unproduced Ben Affleck's The Batman, Raymond was also offered to produce it while Affleck was given the director's seat. But after the cancellation of that movie, since Zack Snyder won the battle over those two guys, I guess he moved on to do the Spider-Man trilogy. Although he originally got involved in The Flash 2023, this film might ignore the events of Batman Forever, but as we cannot waste time to this ill-fated movie, then what Tim Burton could have directed 2002's Spider-Man. As I know, we need to contain what is the most dumbest scenes I could... All I can say is that 20% of this movie, for what I discovered what would believe... What can I think before 1999 could happen? Now, let's impeccably... Pitch this idea of what I could write my words on reviewing this movie. Now, the plot is very simple. Batman, portrayed by Val Kim Kilmer, decides to stop Two-Face, voiced by Tori Lee Jones, and the Riddler, voiced by Jim Carrey, in a master plan to extract all the information from the minds of everyone in Gotham City, but Batman decides to... Uh, Adopt some sort of orphaned child named Dick Grayson, who becomes acrobatic sidekick Robin, voiced by Chris O'Donnell. But they both develop feeds for psychologist Dr. Chase Meridian, voiced by Nicole Kidman. Well, specifically, Schumacher wanted to eschew the dark, disturbing atmosphere of Burton's films by drawing inspiration from the Dick Sprang comic books as well as the 1960s TV series. Although, specifically from the Batman comic books, Keaton didn't want to reprise his role, as well as William Baldwin and Ethan Hawke, were considered a replacement before Val Kim joined the cast. Specifically, George Clooney, who auditioned to portray Clayface, would later be involved to portray Batman as well. Originally debuted on June 9th, 1985, uh, the Man Village Theatre, it had a budget of $100 million and it grossed up to $336.6 million. Specifically, this was due to the obvious reasons why 
Tony Zuko was notoriously absent from appearing in this movie. For some reason why I hate this movie, despite being a box of his success, is that it just got mixed reviews because they praised the visuals from some of the performers like Seal and The Offspring. I know I like Kiss from a Rose. That is by far the best superstar hero song I've ever listened to since childhood. But I hate the CGI, the costume designs, and total departure from the original films. And I don't get this concept. Since Robert was absent for appearing in the Burton films, this is how we would have got Billy Dean Williams reprising his role as Two-Face, but no, we didn't get him doing it. So, now let's tackle the real story. When local vigilante Batman defuses a hostage situation that was caused by Two-Face, formerly District and Natalie Harvey Dent. However, the flashback reveals that Two-Face was disfigured by the acid caused by infamous mobster Sal Moroni, a.k.a. Salvatore Vincent Moroni for short. Hmm. Salvatore is so Italianish. Now, speak of Salvatore, Oh, for the love of Italians. Now, let's just discover what it, we can also handle this one. Now, for the next story of this plot told. And, wait for it. There, that's better. Just because Batman failed to prevent Harvey from dying, this caused Harvey from developing a split personality. Meanwhile, Edward Nigma who is an eccentric researcher at Wayne Enterprises, approaches his employer, Bruce Wayne, who appears to be his huge fan, with an invention that, can, that could beam TV signals directly into his brain. But Bruce declines that device, specifically because no one could manipulate their minds. But he kills the supervisor, staging it as suicide, but Nigma plots revenge to resign it against Bruce, by sending him the riddles of causing Chase to diagnose Nigma as psychotic. However, the embittered Bruce attends a highly circus event with Chase, but Two Face hijacks the event and threatens to detonate a bomb unless Batman should surrender. But Dick uses his acrobats batic skills from the flying graces by throwing some sort of bomb into the river. Although, when the river fills with a bomb, Two-Face accidentally kills his family. This causes Bruce to persuade the failed dick to be at Wayne Manor as his prisoner for causing the mistake to happen. Wow, that reminds me how Shark Tale came to be. But when Dick discovers that Bruce is Batman, he's determined to avenge the death of his family as Dick demands to join Batman in crime fighting hoping to kill Two-Face. But Batman doesn't want to kill Two-Face. Nigma, like Two-Face, creates his own villain called the Riddler. Although despite not being hit by acid, he allies with Two-Face as they commit a series of robberies to finance his new company and mass produce a brainwashing device called the Box, which steals information from everyone's minds and transfers it to Nigma's. That sounds like Nigma had psychic powers. For some reason, for obvious reasons, this will make him smarter in the process that would also make Two-Face dumber. At a party hosted by Nygma, Batman pursues Two-Face but almost dies but gets saved by Dick. Batman, however, there's a chase who explains she's following in love with Bruce because he's revealed her secret identity but they both discovered in what Rilla and Two-Face discovered the secret through the box. They blow up the bad game, suiting Bruce and kidnapping Chase. As Bruce recovers, he and his brother Armfred, who have survived his death who has survived his death, deduces that Nigma is the Riddler. Bruce finally accepts Dick as his partner in crime. At the lair, Robin tries to kill Two Face, who holds him at gold puzz, but spares him. The Riddler reveals that Chase and Robin are bounded and gagged in tubes on a deadly drop a la Who Framed Roger Rabbit. But Batman gets the chance to save only one where he still loves. 
but he distracts the Riddler with Riddler by accident before destroying the breakaway receiver with Batarang, draining his the Riddler's mind, allowing rescue, allowing Batman to rescue both of them. But Two Face corners them and turns their face by flipping, fate by flipping the coin. But Batman throws a handful of identical coins in the air, causing Two Face to double confusion and to fall into his death. He was committed to Arkham Asylum. Nicola now exclaims he's Batman, flapping the arms of his straight jacket, which leads the chase to remark he was truly insane. Bruce resumed his crusade as Batman with Robin and his partner, which would set up the events for Batman and Robin. After, barely after Batman and Robin lost to Toy Story at the 97 Oscars, this movie starring George Clooney and Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator? I'll be back. As Mr. Freeze, and also Chris O'Donnell, O'Donnell reprising his role as Dick Grayson, they also added Poison Ivy and Bane as a result of the creativity. Well, as a result of the, the writing being by Kiva Goldsman, Although Batman 4 was the last uh, Tim Burton movie that Burton would ever do to be with Batman. Although Batman 4 was the last superhero movie to be written, to be produced. Specifically, all I can say is that just because Batman Forever was the last superhero movie to be involved with Tim Burton, this one is by far a franchise killer. As I noticed, this movie got negative reviews, specifically because of the Smashing Pumpkins performed The End is the Beginning of the End. I mean, The End is the Beginning is the End. What counted all the future plans and the poor reception, the planned Batman Unchained never came to be. As a result of this, that applies to the 150 million Superman film titled Superman Lives, which was recycled into Wild Wild West. As a result of this, this led to the main reason why I think this movie had no idea what they're doing. This one only had 125 to $160 million and a budget of $238 million. All I can say is, I would give both Batman and Robin and Batman Forever a 2 out of 10. For the reason why these movies killed the franchise is that I hate the CGI it added special effects and the costume designs and the visuals that people praised it. I know James Wilu said that this is not what I want to see. As I noticed, this is not what I expected to believe. It doesn't make sense that the Schumacher Batman duology, which was analyzed for no good reason, just got bit into the dust. Why do they have to leave the franchise to rot itself apart? I know there's always a mask behind the man. That's okay. But without doubt, I've ran out of ideas. Just because Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy want to save the planet into believing that the Earth was the, the city of God's who was dying of fresh air due to the lack of not having fresh air, that's okay. But with that out of the way, I have no choice but to say goodbye to you now. But if you could hit the like button, you could you could sub subscribe it to now. So bye bye.